Um, uh, the, the next speaker who wants to talk about uh, machine tooling for making autonomous driving software is Mike Milinkovic of the Eclipse Foundation. Um, uh, the Eclipse Foundation is uh, another important part of the FOSS ecology, um, uh, increasingly uh, possessed of all the Java that's worth possessing and uh, an awful lot of long life cycle software of various kinds, um, which it, oh. better than anybody else, seems to know how to take good care of. What do I need to do now? Let's see. It's going to present there. Yeah, I think you just need to. Yeah. There we go. Yep. I'll just use this. So, sure. Yeah, I'll be fine. Oh, Whoops. You want? Thank you. Let's try from the beginning. All right. So it turns out that I'm mostly here because of a cut and paste error. <laughs> um, because I what I what I what I sent to Evan said advanced uh, or sorry autonomous driving systems. And it actually turns out that the what we're going what we talk about at Eclipse is automated driving systems because um, uh, we'll get into this a little bit more. But it turns out that what, uh, the Eclipse Foundation is a U.S. Uh, not-for-profit. We're actually the oldest 501c6 in the uh, in the open source world, and uh, I think actually now I'm the longest-serving executive director in open source, which is uh, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, I guess the gray hair is worth something. Uh, but we, but we're, so we're a U.S. company. We run it from Canada. We keep all our data in Canada, so we're mostly GDPR compliant. Um, and we are much further along than we would be otherwise. Uh, but it turns out that when it comes to a lot of the technology and a lot of the stuff we do, we're entirely German-focused. And I think we're the only, one of the very few, uh, sorry, U.S.-based open source organizations that actually has a German subsidiary. Um, and uh, so we do a lot of work with, uh, a lot of work in, in the German automotive space. So, I, so just to put this in perspective, 350 projects, 275 corporate members, 1,500 committers, and we have 30 professional staff. Um, and uh, so that, that's, that's the Eclipse Foundation. Um, but I want to start off by, whenever somebody gets up and talked, and there's particularly in a context like this, it's kind of like, okay, so what's, what's your story? Like, what, what, you know, what interests you? And um, how many people here know, people who are with me at lunch don't get to answer this, but how many people here know what that is? It is? Nope, actually, it's, this is a um, Ferroc 25 linear accelerator that gives people with cancer large doses of radiation. And uh, this is actually, in 1987, this was actually the first documented case of a software bug that killed people. Um, so that's why it's, that's why it's interesting. Um, it turns out that in 1987, uh, oh, by the way, and I'm from Ottawa, Canada, and uh, they were made in Ottawa, Canada. And in 1987, um, I got cancer, and I spent six weeks on one of these. And uh, so the fact that I'm alive is just basically a matter of either operator, not operator error, or um, some just some good old-fashioned good luck. And so for me, when we talk about functional safety of software systems, um, you know, it's kind of ironic. I'm, I was actually studying for my master's in software engineering at exactly the time that this was going on. Uh, so just, it's just in this incredible coincidence of just amazing, like, well, luck or bad luck or good luck, but it was a pretty amazing scenario. And the other thing to know about me is I really, really, really like to drive. Um, uh, that's actually me on a racetrack. And, uh, um, and yeah, so I like to drive fast, and I've probably spent more hours studying driving than um, most autonomous driving systems have. Uh, but it's, it's good fun. Um, I actually added this slide today as we're talking because I thought about this as, as we're going through is really what a lot of what we're talking about in through this uh, this day today is about instilling trust in the systems that are about to increase and we're talking about autonomous driving and, and automotive in general but this is just one of the many vectors in which computers are taking increasing control of our lives and really what we're talking about here is trust across the life cycle and I think this morning um, the, you know uh, Mark's talk about the s snaps and what he was working with with Ubuntu. That's really about software provenance. It's like, how, you know, well, how do you know what's actually running on your machine? 
Software safety, which what you know, really Nicholas's talk, and and uh, that was a great rant, man. That was, I really love that talk. Um, is you know, knowing, trying to know what the software is actually going to do, um, or being able to uh, you know reverse engineer what the software is going to do. Um, but you know, one of the things we haven't really talked about, and I'm sure that you're really aware of this, but it just didn't get to it with the time you had. Is there's also you now increasingly going to become important uh, is this concept of data provenance, um, which is sort of this yet untouched area of uh, uh, error that can enter into our systems. Because as more and more, it's not about programming, it's about, um, it's about actually you know, machine learning. The data that goes into the machine learning algorithms is what's gonna ultimately determine their behavior. And actually, how many people heard this thing as about a month and a half ago, I think, where um, Amazon Alexas were uh, maniacally screaming and laughing in the middle of the night? Right, um, like, I don't have one. I don't think I ever will. But uh, you know, so that's actually an example of uh, data poisoning, uh, or at least they think it's an example of data poisoning, which is a perfect. And this is almost a trivial example: somebody doing a prank. But by putting in understanding a little bit about how the algorithms worked and putting in some bogus data, they actually got this really, um, you know, unhappy experience. But imagine if you actually had systems. Uh, that we're doing something much more critical that where we didn't actually completely manage the provenance of the data and a nefarious actor was able to, to, to pull off something much more, uh, much more um, problematic. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Um, so th really I think what we need to do as we're talking about growing these systems is, and open source is definitely part of the solution here. You know, if you can't read the code, why would you ever trust it? Um, and if you can't share the code and learn from the code, again, why would you ever trust it? So open source is part of the solution, but we have so, um, so much more to do on so many other aspects before we can, before we can think that we're done. So I'm here to talk about um, OpenADX, and we'll return to it a little bit. And um, so OpenADX is a project that we're just kicking off at the Eclipse Foundation that has aspirations of creating an end-to-end -end tool chain. Um, and it's really more of an end-to-end -end ecosystem um, for doing all of the tooling that you need for building automated driving systems. And so if you look at the tool chain that automotive companies are using today for what they call level two and level three systems, uh, sorry, I can't remember what the name of this, they, they, in automotive there's this five level system where basically level one is what we know of today as cruise control, uh, level five would be full autonomous driving, right? And most uh, automotive companies these days are working on level two and level three. They're just kind of maybe getting started with level four, uh, but it's not, it's just they have a long way to go and they recognize they have a long way to go. But for the folks that are working on the level two and level three systems today, this is the kind of tool chain that they will, um, that they're, they're grappling with. The thing to understand is that on every single one of these nodes in this linear system here, um, you have different vendors different tools, different data standards. Some of them are proprietary, proprietary, some of them are open source, and frankly, it's just a complete mess. Uh, and so what the OpenADX solution is trying to do, or what, what, the, what we're trying to accomplish, and this was um, primarily initiated um, by Bosch, uh, who's one of the companies that we work with quite a bit in Germany, and it's really about trying to have uh, a notion of industry-wide interoperability for tools for helping to build um, automated driving systems. But before I can really talk about OpenADX, I have to talk about some of the other stuff because of, uh, that's happening at Eclipse because without sort of the context of the other things that we're building, it doesn't really actually make a lot of sense. Or it certainly wouldn't be like, why would you be doing that at Eclipse? So one of the other projects we have is called OpenPass, um, which is uh, specifically focused on doing simulation for being able to test um, automated driving systems. So OpenPass stands for Open Platform for the Assessment of Safety Systems. Um, and it, this is, don't think of it as a single simulation engine. Um, think of it as a platform for combining many simulation engines to test many, many scenarios. Uh, and so this is um, a group of companies involved, uh, the Volkswagen Group and Audi is, is involved. Um, and the initial code contribution came in from uh, VW, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but there's one symbol on there that's actually particularly interesting, and it's the most recent uh, organization to join this little adventure, and that's um, TÜV Sud, which is actually the safety authority in Germany. 
And actually, what, that's one thing that we haven't really touched on enough today, I think, is like we're in, you're sitting in New York in the US. The regulatory regimes in Europe are completely different than what we have here. And um, I think it's fair to say that the Germans are particularly inflexible when it comes to um, modifying their rules just because the companies are jumping up and down. Maybe that's a gross generalization, but the fact that you still can't get an Uber um, in, uh, in, in most of Germany, I think is a, a reasonable example of that, is they, they, they have their rules and they stick to them. Um, and um, that's, usually, that's usually a good thing. Uh, but the fact, the reason why TÜVSU joined this organization is because everybody is motivated to increase the level of safety, and the more that we can do that without having humans behind steering wheels, the better. Um, and so I think right now the general rule is you have to drive a model of a car for 100,000 kilometers on German roads before you can have even a hope of getting it, uh, getting it qualified uh, with, a new, with a new system. Um, and the goal of Open Pass is explicitly to, to cut that number in half. So this is actually big money, right? If you have a human being behind the wheel for 100,000 kilometers, that's expensive, right? So if we can reduce that number through simulation, we're going to make, process, uh, we're going to make progress faster. So the kinds of things they do are accident uh, re-simulation, traffic simulation, scenario variation. Um, so you can play more games uh, with, the, with the sensors and the systems and see how it reacts. You can play more games and do that way faster through simulations than you can through, through, re uh, th uh, through real world. Another project we have at Eclipse Sumo uh, is Eclipse Sumo, and this is, uh, this is a, a, a really interesting, very, very large um, city simulation. Um, so their goal is to basically model everything that's moving in a city at once. Um, and uh, so this comes from DLR, which is the uh, German equivalent of NASA. Um, and what they can do, they've actually got to the point where they can actually do a pretty decent job of modeling all of the stuff moving in Berlin. Um, which is a pretty decent sized city, so at once they can be simulating all the cars, all the bicycle, I think they have it right down to the bicycles, I don't think they have it right down to the pedestrian, but all the trains and, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, light rail and everything all moving at once. Um, so it's been around for quite a while um, and it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty exhaustive. Um, so you can do it with or without graphical, uh, graphical UI and uh, so, and really, I mean basically what they need to model other, other cities is just better data. Um, but that's an, another project we have at Eclipse. And then a third one I just wanted to mention in passing is Eclipse Cuxa, um, which is uh, partially funded by the, uh, the European uh, Union's H2020 uh, art research program. And what it's doing is building a complete open source platform for connected cars. Uh, so this isn't really about, uh, just, isn't just simply about autonomous driving or automated driving. This is just about uh, one of the precursor technologies to completely enabling that, which is a full stack for doing connected cars. Uh, so Ericsson and Bosch are the two primary industrial partners in this, uh, but it's basically tackling everything from the 5G layer up to how you uh, aggregate and manage the, uh, the time series data in the cloud and everything in between. Um, so it's, it's a pretty ambitious, uh, pri oh, and, and by the way, um, a, uh, a full IDE um, for developing applications for the platform as well. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty much an end-to-end -end solution, including, or not a solu solu yeah, solution is definitely the wrong word. This is a research program and an open source project. It's not uh, ready for, and it's just getting started. So solution is too strong of a word, but the vision is that this is a complete scenario, a complete stack, if you will, uh, for doing connected car, including um, the ability to uh, have a, to a full tool set for building software for it. <clears throat> so that little bit of context, let's go back and talk a little bit about OpenADX and what the goals are there. And so automated driving is a complex challenge. I, f I think we probably have figured that out after um, being at this for almost eight hours. Um, so there's a lot of different aspects that go into it. Um, and there's a lot in building these systems. Um, well, I think... Uh, Evan says it's impossible. Others believe that it's maybe within the realm of possible possibility within 40 years or so. Um, but no matter uh, whether we're, you know where you are on the ambition scale, I think it's fair to say that it's they're complicated enough without having your tool set um, or the the tools that you use to build the systems being a complete mess, which is pretty much the scenario right now. Um, so. 
it's a, it's a, is a very long chain of requirements to put together a system and test a system like this, and none of these tools were ever designed to work together. Um, so, therefore, the idea is to use the open source techniques that, we're, that we've had lots of practice at and see if we can come up with something that, that works better. And the value here, there is value here for everybody involved in the tool chain. So OE, whether you're an OEM, or, or not the tool chain, in the supply chain. So whether you're an OEM, an uh, automotive tier one, uh, an IT or tech company, semiconductor company, or an engineering service provider, um, all, of, all of the various players in this automotive ecosystem building these systems have business motivations for, want, for, for wanting these kinds of tools to exist. Um, so, so the, the, as we already talked about, the idea is to build this complete tool chain and use this as a reference, um, reference architecture to ensure um, in, uh, implementations and interoperability. And the way that we're doing this is this is, because this is an integration story, it's not just simply building a bunch of software and, and you know, saying that we're going to do all of this in one project. This is a story of integration. And so really what the focus initially, and certainly for the next year or two, is primarily around test beds. Um, so basically, pulling together uh, tools that work in parts and demonstrating their interoperability and using them to build a solution for something that does more than what they can just do by themselves. <coughs> so, and the, the glue code um, that's actually gonna be used to, um, uh, to implement these, these integrations is all gonna be done in, done in open source. Uh, and the goal over time, we hope, um, is that this will be used to drive standardization. Uh, we'd have no particular um, uh, ideas on where that standardization might take place, but that's, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the goal eventually. So first two test beds that are currently under construction right now, one is uh, focusing on simulation. Um, so it's actually uh, using the, uh, some of the pieces from OpenPass uh, that I was talking about uh, earlier to actually demonstrate um, simulation um, for, uh, for automated driving systems. So basically testing scenarios out and seeing how the automated driving systems react. And then the other, the other test bed that's under construction is around data store and data management. So um, as cars generate an enormous amount of telemetry data, as I'm sure you're aware, and um, so capturing that data and being able to manage it and then being able to feed that back into the simulation and test engines. So those are the first two, um, the first two test beds that are currently under construction. So the timeline, um, so they're um, uh, just wrapped up a big uh, conference in Berlin uh, last month called uh, Bosch Connected World, uh, where part of they had, uh, as part of Bosch Connected World, they had the largest hackathon in, um, in Europe. There's like 450, uh, people there for whether from startups and students and a great great mix of people and um, several uh, of the uh, the groups that were in the hackathon uh, were um, hacking on this particular problem and did some pretty interesting demonstrations um, and then coming up pretty soon is a DDS based uh, simulation tool um, connector for uh, DDS I don't know if you how many people know that it's one of the IOT related protocols um, and uh, is uh, it's actually one of the underpinnings for, I can't remember who was mentioning ROS, um, but it's, on one of, it's at the core of ROS um, for how it uh, distributes data through the, through the systems. So with that, thank you. And uh, I think now we can throw it open to questions.